Hello everyone. I am going to walk through my finished uh, Fairy Whispers album and I absolutely love how this turned out. Um, I have a lot of different um, tips and tricks as well as how I put my pages together um, going forward on the video. But now that the cover is done, I would like to show you uh, the entire album. So I have used uh, a mix of flowers, sorry that doesn't go on there, from the Prima flowers from The Nature Lover. I also have some 49 and Market um, flowers on here. Uh, these are some sparklets or sprinklets, I think they're called. Anyways, these are also from um, a, an older design team package that I had. I'm not quite sure if those are still available in the shop. but. I also added these little leaves here that are just um, something that was in my stash with the added glitter. I have used the Wink of Stella Clear on both the butterfly here as well as the butterfly in her hair and some of those flowers, as you can see. And I have also used um, the Oyster Ultra Fine Art Glitter glitter from the Glitter Sprayer. So on the cover, I've taken one of the um, ephemera images of one of the fairy's faces and put it on there and I just added those little crystals along a row in her hair on the leaves and I get that wrapped um, chipboard for my cover piece I will show you going forward um, how I did that on my spine I have this fairy piece that was left over actually from a page and I liked how that looked on the spine and then we have a uh, piece of the black seam binding for both the closure as well as my my bow which is a little out of sorts now but it'll get poofed so i was originally going to use um these metal prima embellishments and i probably will use these i'm going to make some tags with the leftover paper and these will probably go on those i did not use them on the album um, normally i would put a a charm that hangs but i really like this image so i didn't want to cover that with a charm so instead, I just added a butterfly here um, from the ephemera. I believe this one is from pack two. And I covered its wings using the clear Wink of Stella. So let's just open this up. These are the clips I will show you how to create one going forward in my video. Very simple. And they do really well with holding down um, your pages if you have like this element, which I will show you how I made. Um, in your side pocket it keeps those down and you can take them out and clip them anywhere you want on their pages and I love that so and they're super easy to make and these were made with the little circles that come in the uh, bits and bobs pack and there's one on um, each side so you can flip the, the paper clip either way you like so we just have a page here that this beautiful imagery that we can just put um, a photo you could add more to this if you like um, again with a photo mat page and another photo mat page and I was quite mindful of my papers um, when they're open the colors matching well for this next page I show you how to do this in um, going forward on my tutorial and this is just a flip out page and then I've added one of the bits and bobs pockets and tags on the inside of that here you just have that beautiful unicorn image another image photo mat Again, with a photo mat here, I will also show you this in my tutorial. I have used um, a piece of the Glacier Blue My Colors cardstock, a strip of leftovers, as well as a piece taken from the Bits and Bobs with the sentiment, and added this little flap here. And another thing that these uh, paper clips do is they weight this kind of thing down, which makes it so it doesn't go flying when you open your pages. Here we have two more photo mats. And then I have another uh, flip out that I show how to do. And our back portion, which is our flip fold pocket. Now I have one of those little paper clips. And then I cut down the tag to put in my pocket. When we open, we have this beautiful imagery here. Another pocket, a tag that was cut using a die from my stash. Um, one of those circles, bits and bobs. And then a photo mat here. Let's put that back in the pocket. And then, of course, our beautiful waterfall pages in the back here. 
and I also have um, a tutorial on how I did that. So that is my my Fairy Whispers album in its entirety, and I will be back with your tips and tricks and a tutorial on how I created this. Hello everyone, Jen Bell here for Country Craft Creations today. And I have a, a new little mini album I am going to create with you. This is done using the Fairy Whispers uh, paper collection uh, from Blue Fern Studios, available at Country Craft Creations. And I am going to be using the 8x8 eight eight, um, set of 20 double-sided designer pages. Um, also in my album, I will be using, and I've just taken these out of the packs um, so that I can show you better. I'm going to be using Ephemera Pack 2 as well as this one here. I'm assuming it's just Ephemera Pack 1. Um, it's not marked 1, but I'm assuming that's what it is. And these are just wonderful little cut-aparts. And then I'm also going to be using um, the Bits and Bobs 24 4x6 sheets. Um, and there's some pockets and different tags that you can cut apart that go in there. So those are the actual... Uh, pieces I'm going to be using. I'm also using uh, the gray artisan cardstock on my album throughout. I've done this in the lay flat method uh, that is available. There's lots of tutorials um, available for that. And this will have a accordion spine that is five pages. And I will give you a little idea. So a while back, actually, I think this might have been my first um, or second Country Craft Creations design team project that I created, uh, was this little fairy album here using uh, a Prima paper. And this measured five by five, and I'm actually doing this new one in six by six. And this little album was just super fun. It had um, just different um, elements, the interactive elements, pockets, um, photo places, little flip outs. Um, it has this back flip out with this different little waterfalls back here. And we're going to do very similar with the Fairy Whispers paper, um, but I am going to make some changes um, additionally besides just the um, larger spine and larger album itself. So I like to cut all of my pieces ahead of time. And what I've done is I have cut all of my pieces out from the papers as well as mats. And I will let you know also for my matting, I am using the Denim Artisan cardstock. And I am also using this um, My Colors cardstock, which is, I probably, I think it's Glacier Blue. And I also am using the um, My Colors Purple Velvet cardstock as well. It's got that shimmer to it, I just love it. Um, I have chosen for my cover and my spine. Now here, the cover and the spine, I have used that Glacier Blue. Just look how beautiful the gray artisan cardstock and that My Colors Glacier Blue goes well together. And it picks up a lot of the color in the papers themselves. So the front cover is going to be this gorgeous um, castle piece. And then our back cover is going to be uh, the flip side of this, or I may use this side. I haven't quite decided. It'll probably actually be this side. And then our spine piece is going to be this lovely um, leftover. I made sure I cut my papers carefully uh, to keep her because she fits perfectly um, once matted onto the spine. Okay, so let's go ahead and put our base pieces on. Um, our glacier blue mats and I'm going to flip my album on its face like this to make it a little easier it looks like I had a little bit of glitter on my desk left over and it is sticking which is fine because I'm actually going to embellish this album with some glitter here and there so uh, glitter and fairies go very nicely together so that works so I'm just going to get some glue on the back side here and we are going to lay our mat down, leaving about, she had that on there, kind of sun, leaving our mat to be a little bit of that gray showing. We want to make sure we don't have too much, but that we have an even amount showing. 
I'm just going to take a rag, as always, and burnish that all down, making sure I get any excess glue off my edges. And I will say with the my colors, I've noticed you do need to push down um, a little harder because it does have that texture. So you just want to make sure that you get it pressed down really, really well. Now, I will tell you the mats for the cover and the back are um, the, in the Glacier Blue are five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. And then the, the spine is one and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. So we're just going to line this up with that top and bottom of the cover that we already laid down. Burnish that out. And on to the final one, which is this one here. Trying to make sure my texture um, lines up as well as I can. It does not have to, of course, because we're going to cover it with other paper. That nice and glued. Again, I have just going to line that all up as well as I can along that edge with those other papers. And as you can see, this glacier blue, uh, my colors, looks amazing with the gray artisan. I can't say it enough. It's just a really pretty um, color combo. It does really well. So now we have our mats down. Next, we're going to take our um, designer papers, and these are going to be five and three quarters by five and three quarters. Let's get that all nice and burnished. Move on to our um, spine piece. Now, this is going to be one and three quarters by five and three quarters. And I like how when I cut it, it it actually was an accident. Um, you can definitely purposely cut this piece, but I was cutting my pages and this little girl here was this little fairy was left over. And I love how it actually says art gallery on the bottom. It just was a perfect scrap piece to use as my spine. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put her on our back piece. Again, this is five and three quarters by five and three quarters. These papers just pick up that um, glacier blue and that gray really nicely. So now we have our front, our spine, and our back covered. Next, we're going to work on our pages. Okay, so for our pages, um, I actually ran out of the Artisan gray cardstock, but I still wanted gray pages. So I just grabbed a gray cardstock um, from my stash, <clears throat> excuse me, and used it. But um, I would suggest using the Artisan if you have enough um, to do that. And I will figure out about how many sheets you would need um, at the end of this so that I can make a cut guide. So I've already adhered a couple of the pages, um, actually four of the five, and then I'm going to adhere one with you so that you can see how I did that. And you have your accordion spine here for your page system. And we just want to make sure, as you can see, I already have four done here. I have one left, and I'm going to take that page, and I'm going to put it on... I'm going to glue right on this side of my spine. You can also use score tape for this if you choose. Um, it works just as well. I just like the glue because I have a little more open time. And if I make a mistake, I can fix it pretty easily. Um, so I'm going to line this up so I don't go all the way over to that, to that um, 
end of the accordion. I don't want to be on that score line, but I do want to try to line up my pages on the top and the bottom. As you can see here, they're lined up nicely. And then I am just going to wipe this down with a towel first, and then I will burnish it with my bone folder. And that gives us our five pages as you can see, which will turn out to be 10 pages in the end um, with the fronts and the backs. Now I'm going to do a couple different things with my pages. Um, so I want to show you first, I'm going to have a couple um, interactive flips that will open on the sides of each one of these. <clears throat> and then of course I'm going to do the back very similar to the original that I did. Um, but for now we are going to go ahead and decorate these inside portions. And this is where I have used the um, My Colors Purple Velvet. And it's absolutely beautiful. I just wanted to add a little purple because there is a lot of purple in this paper. Um, so I did somewhat of a color blocking by using different colors. And as you can see, again, just like the glacier blue this purple velvet looks amazing up against gray so i wanted to have a lot of color but still keep that that um, cohesive vintage look to this um, and that is why i chose these colors so we are just going to put that mat down again uh, this is going to measure five and seven eighths and five and seven eighths um, of an inch to uh, the same as the mat that we did on the cover. These are our inside covers. So we're going to put that one in and then we're going to flip to the back and use our other five. Now I'm going to peel off this. Um, I left this here so I could recall the color for you. Um, but this stuff does peel right off of the artisan cardstock. Excuse me, this is my colors cardstock. I apologize. Um, there are no stickers on the artisan. So we are going to adhere this just like we did the first. Don't go all the way to the edge, but right up to it if you can. And make sure that you have enough space all the way around, about an eighth of an inch of that gray showing that so that we see the gray and then the purple. It gives a very nice layered look. And also when I did my um, lay flat method, I had to add a little piece of paper. And as you can see by matting this, you can no longer see that little bit of um, paper, except for right on the edge where I had add, added paper. So now we have completed our cover, our back, our spine, and now our two inside mats. Now we're going to take some of the designer paper and we are going to adhere it onto our papers. So I'm going to take, this is the same paper piece um, that I had left over and I want to make sure that I put it in a way that I can see uh, this lace on the edge and that's why I chose this piece here. So I'm going to take this piece and um, it is actually turned sideways. Um, but you can do that with these papers because they have the, um, as long as there's no script, you can flip paper any way that you choose. And this does not have any visible script. So I can place this on here with the lace on the edge like that. And it works just fine. Again, this page would be five and three quarters by five and three quarters. Just like the cover in the back. And we're just going to burnish that down. And the reason that I did it this way, um, so you can see the lace, uh, just so that I have something poking out of my uh, waterfall that will be back here. Now we're going to lay our other piece, which is going to be the lace also sticking out but of the opposite side so when you open this and you have that little key there which is really really pretty again the paper is going sideways and you could do this any way you want you can put the paper um, right side up if you prefer or you can do it as i've done and um 
had that little bit showing. All right, so next we're gonna move on to um, some of the inside portions of this album, and I'm gonna get some stuff together, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I apologize, a little error on my part. I actually um, placed this down a little too soon. So your back cover, um, my original album had this um, waterfall here, and then it has this piece that flips over. And if you're doing this portion, um, you will need to cut a piece of cardstock. Now, I've used the Denim Artisan. And this is actually a piece that measures five inches by 11 inches. And this was scored at one half of an inch and then scored again at five and a half and at nine. So what you're going to do with this is you're going to turn it in this direction. Now I have had to go in and this is, is, is doable. Um, if you make a mistake like I did, nobody's perfect. I have this little flat tool from Cricut and because my glue hadn't quite dried all the way, I was able to just kind of slip that underneath and, um, make it so I can slip the tab that goes under there underneath. So what I'm going to do, um, if you were doing this properly, um, and doing it before you laid your papers, um, you can just put this with score tape and slide this under here, adhere it down, and then put these papers on top. But because I didn't do that, I am going to show you my little trick for when I make an error. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put glue on the back, not on the upside, but on the back side. And then I'm gonna slide this into that spot where it needs to go make sure that I can fold it and then I'm just going to burnish it down so that I know that this portion adhered first. Then once I get that done, which I see it's a little off. Okay. Then I'm just going to lift this up a little bit and add glue underneath right along the edge and burnish that down as well. Getting rid of any excess glue, which there probably will be some um, if you make the same mistake. But I would suggest um, adhering this either with score tape or glue before placing uh, this back portion on. And that way you have your element already in there. And this will be our element that looks like this one that closes over our um, waterfall. I'm just going to make sure that that's all. All right. So we're going to go ahead and decorate some papers next. And I have laid my papers out as I pulled the gray out of them. I already had them all cut and lined up. And so each one of these pages is going to have a mat and a designer sheet a mat and a designer sheet and we will cover this gray um, spine piece when we do this. So I have these laid out my first page here I have this I have the um, glacier blue and the mats for the pages so the pages measure uh, the gray pieces here these measure um, five and three quarters by five and three quarters so let me get you the measurement of our mats for the pages in just one second. I'm going to go ahead and put this down. Now you want to make sure that you um, have that little bit of gray showing. Again, this is a mat, um, so we want to make sure we can see it. It is meant to enhance the paper and bring out these colors. And this paper does have a lot of this aqua color in it as well as blues and purples. So once I get that all down, uh, let me just tell you, these mats for the pages, the pages again are five and three quarter by five and three quarter. So your mats are going to be
They are going to be five and five eighths by five and five eighths. That'll be the size of your mats. So my first lady here is this gorgeous piece. I love this fairy. I love this paper. It's absolutely beautiful paper. So we are going to put her down onto our mat. Showing a little bit of that blue all the way around. Slip a little. Okay, so now we have our first page down. And we're going to go to the second side of that. And I'm going to use denim blue for this mat. Again, five and five eighths by five and five eighths. Just under that three and a quarter mark so that it shows. Or three quarter mark, I apologize. Getting my numbers mixed up today. Again, we want to see some of that gray all the way around. So we are going to just burnish that blue down. A little too much glue there. Looks like it does not want to stick here, so I must not have got enough glue on my edge. So I'm just going to go in, add some more. All right, so that's going to be our first page. Um, we will add this lovely piece on it as well. But I want to show you, so that's how you decorate your pages, and those will all be the same. Now, my second page in my original album has a, another fold-out element, and we're going to do that so I can show you um, the proper way. And this is the way you would have done that back one. So this is a piece of the denim blue cardstock that measures five artisan cardstock by five and three quarters, and it is Scored down the side at half an inch. So I'm just going to burnish out my score line here really quick. And then I'm going to show you how to do this with score tape this time. So I'm just going to grab my score tape. I think that's the right size, yes. And we are just going to run that down, being sure we get in all sides. We don't want it to stick out anywhere or it will stick wrong. You just want to make sure you line it up and burnish that tape down. Peel off our backing. And then you're going to take this with it folded to that second page. And we are just going to put this right on top of and line it up so that it's lined up with the bottom and the top. This is the same height as our pages. And then we're just going to burnish that down. And if you do cut, um, some cutters don't cut perfectly evenly. Um, I've had that happen to me several times. And therefore, you might get a little overhang at the top. Um, if it shows and it bothers you, you are, can cut that off very easily with your scissors. I'm going to go ahead and adhere my next page here so that it's not floating around and this is just side b of our first page so it's actually page two Okay, so now that you have that done, um, let me show you how we're going to adhere the page to this so that it lines up. So we'll do this side first. And I have my page two stuff ready. I'm going to call go ahead and I'm going to mat with my glacier blue first. Okay. 
Get a good burnish there. And we will go back and decorate this page. I want to show you how you cover um, this area having this. This is how we should have done uh, the back piece. So for this one, my second side for my mat is going to be the denim blue, and it will match with this. So go. In, we're going to go ahead and we're going to glue down the mat. And you're still going to see a little bit of that gray, and that's totally fine. A little more glue there. Sometimes these accordion spine systems... Um, are a little stiff until you've worked them a little bit and because of that you really have to burnish down your paper on the spine portion okay now we can add our paper to this which is going to be our unicorn because this page is going to go on this side and these coincide really nicely together. Um, you won't see the very front of this, but that is all right. We're just gonna go ahead and put that on there. Burnish that all down. And now we have our beautiful unicorn paper there. And this beautiful moth paper was going to go on this page. Then we will decorate this side and this side with the patterned papers as well. And I will get the rest of these pages decorated and I will be right back. Okay, so now we're gonna assemble our little waterfall in the back, and that is going to require four pieces of paper. I've used uh, two of the My Colors Glacier Blue and two of the uh, Artisan Denim, just to coincide with everything here. Now, these pieces all will measure uh, four and a half by five and a half, and these are placed on your scoreboard and they are scored at half an inch just like a normal waterfall and that's going to end up giving us pages that are four inches by five and a half inches great for um, normal sized photos and these are going to go back here so just keep in mind which one you want on top i'm going to go with my dark blue first and then alternate between the lights and the darks. And we're just gonna put these on like a normal waterfall. Uh, we're going to just add some glue to the flap, the half inch flap, and line that up right in the center of where that paper is. Not on uh, the purple lining, but on that right up next to it. I need to go down just a little. Try to keep this as centered as possible. And then we're just going to burnish that down. Grab my little towel here and just make sure I get rid of all that excess glue in there. And then we're just going to add our next one. Now I will tell you that my colors glimmer cardstock is a little slicker. So when you put your glue on, it might slide around on the paper a little bit more than what you um, anticipate. So just be mindful of that. Um, we're just going to line this up with that last one. 
And I'm going to press this down slightly so I can see um, that I'm lining everything up. You want to make sure that when you close the first one over the second one that they line up nicely. And they do, so I'm going to go ahead and burnish this next one down. And then we move on to the next denim blue. This is again the denim artisan cardstock. Again, we're just going to put that right up against where the last one ended. And close this over to make sure we have a nice even look, which I do. And I'm going to burnish that down. Make sure again. Yep. And then our last one, which is again the Glacier Blue My Colors cardstock. Right up against that last one. Make sure that we're even. We are. And I'm going to burnish that down. Okay, so now you can see when you open these, they're all even. When you close them, they're all even. And leaving that little bit of space there is what makes this easier for this to fold. Uh, this will have a little bit of bulk when we add stuff to it. So we just want to make sure that when we close this over, um, that we have a nice, clean um, look. So you just want to make sure that that is all nice and burnished. So it will lay down. And then we're going to add our pieces. Now I've chosen a method that is not my own. Um, this was done by one of the other designers on a project a while back, and I absolutely love this look. And what she does is she takes <clears throat> pieces of the paper and she cuts them in strips to put on your um, page so that they all line up and make um, the photo as you're looking at it. So we have four strips here. These measure to be one half of an inch by five and a half. And we'll start with the first one. Just going to add my glue to the back of that. And that's just going to go right down on that first page, first waterfall page. Get all that excess glue off of there. And there's our first, our second piece. And you'll see when this all comes together um, how great this method is because it lets you have blank space um, as far as your colored cardstock, but then it also gives you a nice image at the bottom. So. As you can see, when you put that together, we want to make sure that our little butterfly is lining up, or moth, I think that's a moth, onto the next piece. See, that one needs to go up a little. And a little over on that. Let's just peel that back up. I apologize for that. Got to make sure these are lined up um, proportionately to the page. And I did not get that one all the way to the bottom of the page. So we are just going to make sure that we can see a little bit of that blue background. And then we know we're not over it. There we go. And then our last piece. Just like that. 
So now, as you can see, you have this wonderful picture when you flip these. But you also have your fronts and backs that you can, you could also embellish these um, more if you choose to. Uh, that is option. So next we're going to complete our back portion. And I will show you once again how I did this in my um, <clears throat> original smaller album that I did last year. Um, the back of this, so we will have a pocket here, and this opens and closes over the waterfall. Now this waterfall is a little different, as you can see. I have done some adjustments, and then we will pull this out. This will become a pocket for a tag, and then we have that photo mat area there and there, and another tag here. So, let me show you how I, I'm losing my string. I did that. Now, we have to decide if we want to cover this with paper, leave it blue. That is um, all an optional thing. So I'm going to um, get the paper for this and I will be right back. Okay, so I have the pieces that are for the front and back of this portion. And these are not going to be matted. We're going to just keep them on the blue. So these pieces will measure to be um, four and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. And this is going to be um, our pieces that go here as well as on the other side. So just add your glue to the back. And then we're going to place that down onto the blue paper, leaving a little bit of that blue showing all the way around, about an eighth of an inch. So it acts as the mat. And then we are going to take this little piece. So we're going to fold this over for now. We'll go back to this. But we want to fold this over. And the reason I'm folding this over now is because I want to add um, my fairy here. And so this is goes very well with this, as you can see. So we're going to put that fairy right on there. Oh, and I apologize. This piece measures... Um, three and three eighths by five. Again, get it on there as even as possible, leaving some of that blue showing as a mat. Grab my towel here and burnish that out. Make sure I don't have any excess glue sticking out anywhere or any parts that aren't adhered. So there you have that portion. Now we're going to flip this over and we are going to put a strip of paper that lines up with that lace. I'm just going to put this right here. I don't need to have a full piece here because we are not um, going to see the bottom. It's going to be under a pocket. And this little piece here measures uh, one and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. And we're just going to line that up with the top and bottom of this and not get it too close to that score line. You want to be able to fold your paper. So don't, don't put it over your score line here where the paper bends. And that is that portion. So now we're just going to add a little bit of glue to both ends of our little flip over pocket. And we're gonna burnish that down. And you can see that that is just a little off. Okay. Now, I wanted to add something to this pocket, but I didn't want to cover the whole pocket. So I've cut a strip of the Glacier Blue uh, that measures three quarters of an inch by five. And we're just going to add glue to the back of that and put it right down the middle of that pocket. Just 
just adds a little extra, um, but you don't have to cover the entire pocket with paper this way. And then I'm going to take one of the little circle pieces that come in um, the pack and I am going to put it right here. And you can do this with um, foam adhesive if you want it to stick up or you can just do it the way that I'm doing or you can use um, score tape or you could use um, sticker paper on the back to make it stick and turn it into a sticker. Okay, so then we're going to flip it over and we're going to adhere this last back piece which is going to be this here. Again, this measures four and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. Apologize for the traffic noise today, if you can hear that. It's quite loud uh, because it is quite rainy outside. So every truck that drives by my house, um, you can hear it switching in the rain. So apologize for that background noise back there. Right, I need to slide this down just a bit. We want to make sure some of that blue is showing. Again, we're letting this blue act as its own mat. We're not going to add extra matting um, to this. Just make sure that gets burnished out really nicely. Any excess glue is removed. And because this is rounded when it folds, you may have to run a bone folder like I am doing down the edge here to get that glue to stick really well. Um, another suggestion or tip I could add is to take a clip or two and clip them on for now. Okay, so now we have our waterfall and our um, back fold out done. Uh, there's a couple more pages here that need to be embellished. Um, I have taken the piece that we did out here, the fold out that we added, um, and taken one of the tags uh, that come with the, um, let me grab that so I know the name of it, it is what comes with the card set, uh, the bits and bobs, and they all have these tags. Um, that are gorgeous you can cut out and the little pocket and I just put the little pocket on there and put the tag in there and it coincides well with the purple flowers here and we're just going to cover this page now um, I'm going to grab some paper and I will be right back okay so I have taken a piece of my leftover paper and I have cut it to measure uh, two and three eighths by a five and five eighths and that's going to go right here we're not going to cover the entire page um, we're going to let some of that blue show so we're just going to leave like i said some of that blue showing line this up nicely in the center of the area that you're working in. I like to embellish pages sometimes as a half page to really let that contrasting um, mat stick out. That's just something I found that I like to do in my albums. If you wanted to cover the whole page, you could do that as well. But now, as you can see, this is um, complete. And you could also add, um, one of these little tags which I think I might just go ahead and add this one I do like this little um, tag and this is another piece that comes in the uh, bits and bobs kind of doing this with you as I go so and now we have something a little bit more on the bottom but we haven't covered the whole page so as you can see you still get all that contrast and if you wanted to take a photo and just put it right there on that page you could easily do it with this underneath there. So next we're gonna go ahead and embellish the rest of these pages. And I've already cut everything out for those. So now we have all of that luxurious purple color on here. 
So now we're going to go to this one and we're going to, again, I'm alternating between my colors for my mats as well as my other portions. And we are just going to add glue to this blue mat. And lay it down on my gray paper. Run my bone folder down the spine area just to get that glue adhered nicely onto the spine. And then we will add our next piece, which will be this piece here. Hope everybody enjoyed the New Year's uh, Eve retreat. That was a lot of fun. Lots of amazing projects. And I did know, um, get a chance to do any of them yet, but they are all very, very inspiring. Okay, I'm just adding paper at this point. We will go back in and do some embellishing. And keep in mind, um, you do not have to embellish your albums exactly the same as mine. You can use whatever papers you want. You can use um, whatever cutouts and such that you want as well. So just like we did back here with our little fold out, I've created another fold out on this page and it's a little smaller. So this is the Glacier Blue My Colors cardstock that measures uh, four and a half by four and three quarters. And that four and, excuse me, yes, four and a half by four and three quarters. And it was scored at half an inch so that I could place it on here. So we have that little flip out and I will show you how I'm going to decorate that one um, as soon as we finish this. So we're gonna take our cardstock in the My Colors Glacier Blue. This is our next mat for the next page. And we're going to add it. And as you want, when you put this down, um, once you get it on there, just like we did the other one, you just want to make sure you don't get in the way of that score line. You want to make sure that that still moves. And just burnish all of this down. Get rid of any excess glue. And then we're on to our um, designer paper that goes on here. And this is the same. So we're taking this from two of the same pieces. This paper is so beautiful. It was very difficult to choose um, where to cut from because I was so afraid of cutting up some of the beautiful images, but you just got to do it All right, so we're just gonna put that down Burnish it make sure there's no excess glue in there and we will go back to this in a moment. I'm going to go ahead and do this page. This is going to be in the Denim Blue Artisan mat. We have the castle on the front, so I don't want to repeat that in the middle. You can. Um, I do a lot of um, repeating images from paper sometimes, but 
Um, this one, I just, I kind of like this little script design on here. So I'm just going to put this one on here. I think I may have originally cut this to use the fairy image, but like I said, I really like the way this looks. So, and just keep in mind, if you don't want to have to do a lot of burnishing and um, pressing the glue out, um, you can always decorate your pages before you put them on the spine. A lot of people do it that way, um, just to eliminate that step. So before I do this last page, I'm going to peel, take off these, not peel, and we're going to open this up so that we have a little less stuff to mess with here. And we have our Glacier Blue mat. Place that down. And on to our paper. Going with this one here. And as you can see, this piece has a lot of that color that mimics that glacier blue. Um, and this is what I was talking about with um, coordinating your card stocks with your paper collections, because you can see how that picks up the gray here and it picks up the blue here and then it picks up that there. And you could also do um, pick up the pink by using a pink mat if you choose. Okay, backside is going to be our denim mat. That is the denim artisan cardstock from Country Craft Creations. I love this color. It's kind of a cornflower blue, maybe you would call it, some people. I just love this color. Purple is my absolute favorite color, so any blue that's very similar to uh, the purple family like this is my jam. I like it. Okay, just gonna make sure that's burnished nice on the spine. And then our last piece is going to be this lovely little fairy. And we are going to put her on. Line that up. We've completed all of our pages. Our flip out here. We need to go to this flip out and find a paper. I'm going to cut this down to that four and three, three eighths mark. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we're just going to add some glue. And you could also just glue the edges of this and make it a tuck spot or a belly band if you choose. Um, I'm just going to place it on here. But if you wanted this to have a spot you could tuck something into, then you would just do like what we did on the pocket in the back where you just um, do these. Okay, so we're going to grab one of these um, stickers or excuse me, the bits and bobs, this little cutout here that says, uh, stop and smell the roses. I like that one. So we're going to cut that one out. And I like how they put this gray border around these for you. Um, so you can cut and have that shadow behind it rather than having to make a mat for it. You still could if you wanted um, even more color in the back. I'm just going to 
um, fussy cut this out and then place it on my page. Kind of line that up with the paper at the bottom. And we have all of these. So this is basically a photo mat album is what it was meant to be. Um, we do need to uh, create a pocket for this back piece here. Okay, so now I am going to show you how I um, did the pocket. The original pocket in this back flap was just a flat pocket with a tag in it. What we're going to do is I'm going to take one of the um, bits and bobs, which is the set here. And each one of these has this little pocket here. Uh, this one is just one of the cards. It's like a journaling card. And what I've done is I've taken that and I've cut it down to measure... Uh, four inches by three and a half inches. And I have scored it a half an inch on both sides and across the bottom, as well as mitering uh, my corners here. And then I took a hole punch that was round, <clears throat> excuse me, and just rounded the top for a little notch. Then I took the cut apart tag and I made that a little smaller, cut the bottom off. So now it only measures from the tip of the rose to the bottom of the tag. We have four and a half. And of course I kept most of the width, almost three inches there. It's two and seven eighths. Uh, but I did cut a lot of the edging off so that it would fit in here. So then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take some uh, score tape. You can also use glue for this, either one works. We're just going to put that all over these flaps of the pockets. Uh, again, you have one across the bottom, and then you also have the two on the sides. And this is just one of the ways I'm changing up my original design. Uh, I, love a, I love a pocket on a page. Um, and uh, the tag, of course, is optional. You can leave this open to put your own... Um, spin on it, put your own keepsake in there, um, whatever you would like to do. All of our backing. And then I'm just gonna, when I put this down, I'm kind of gonna off-center it. Instead of being right in the middle of the page like the original, I'm gonna put this really close to the bottom corner. And I'm going to adhere that. See, now you have this nice little page, and then you can just slide that little tag right in there. Easy peasy. So then on this page, I've taken a piece of paper that was left over um, from one of those. It is actually this um, Bits and Bobs pocket, and I cut all of the side half inch off this side as well as this side and only kept the other side. And then I've rounded the corners and added score tape to my flap. I did miter that bottom and top corner. I make sure my score tape is down well. And this is just going to be a flip out um, that can be uh, used any way you like if my score tape will come off. And we're just going to adhere this somewhere right near the middle of this page. Make sure it's nice and straight. Burnish it down. And now you have this fun little flip out which you could put another picture on. Um, you could put a sticker on this to close this if you like. Um, I have contemplated putting this here, but what we're gonna be doing um, with these little circles that come with the bits and bobs is making some paper clips. And I will show you how I make one, and then I will show you um, how to put them in. Now we do have a few other pages that could be um, decorated. You can do them the same way. You can add some flips like this one. Um, you can add uh, smaller flips like this. There's also the option of a full another page pullout that is the same height but shorter. There's just many different things you can do uh, with a mini album. And then of course we have our, our front pocket here. So. 
Okay, so now we're gonna add our front angled pocket, um, like was done in the first, and I'll just show you. This piece of gray artisan cardstock measured originally to be uh, five and a half by six, and I, how I make my angled pockets is I score at a half an inch on this down the left side and across the bottom, snip that edge off so that these are mitered corners, and then we're gonna fold it. Now I did also have to miter uh, the top portion of this as well once I folded. And then what I've done is I've set it on my album where I want the, the pocket to line up, and I just held it down and pulled this excess back like so, so that I could see right where I want that line. And I burnish that. And then I flip that inside. And this makes it so that you have a smoother, um, when you set something inside of here, and it gives you that little bit of extra um, so it doesn't get hung up. And we're just gonna glue that little flap down onto the inside, if my glue will cooperate with me. Doesn't take a lot of glue because we're just tacking this down. We don't need it to be um, fully burnished or anything. It just is going to tack down inside of there. And then we will add glue to our half inch scored flaps. And we're going to just place that down. Fold your flaps over. Line it up so that you see that purple cardstock, but not necessarily the um, designer paper. And I, that's how I choose to do it. You um, can show some of the designer paper. You can put it all the way to the corner and not show any of the purple. Um, there's just, there's many opportunities to do it in your own way here. I'm just going to burnish all that down. And now this is a wonderful tuck spot for one of these bits and bobs um, cards, which I will cut down with you and show you. I'm just going to remove all of the white. Excuse my mess. I'm just going to remove all of the white on the outside here. So I don't need any of this white outline because this will just become a photo mat. And because Blue Fern Studios paper is a heavier weight, um, we don't have to mat this or anything. You can if you choose to, um, but we are just going to cut all of this white edge off. And then I'm gonna take my uh, We Are Memory Keepers rounder, and I'm gonna go ahead and round all of my corners with that 10 millimeter round side. And now we have this beautiful photo mat that you can just slide right inside of that pocket. Now we're going to cover this pocket. To cover this is you just want to measure um, the width of your pocket across the bottom, which is five, and then the top, which is now that it has been folded and such, is a five and not quite a quarter. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut a piece of this paper. Let me set my album out of the camera frame. I'm just going to cut a piece of this paper that it is five inches wide. So we're going to pull it back because we don't want it to cover the whole pocket. We're going to go to four and seven eighths. And I'm going to trim that down, save that piece for something else. And then I also want to trim this side, turn it around and trim it as well to where we were with the other, which this actually measures... We're going to take this to five and a quarter. And we're going to cut that. I'm going to get rid of my cutter, pull my book back in here. Now what we're going to do here, I'll just turn my camera a little bit here, is we're going to put this on here. So we want to line this up, see where we're at. And then you just need to kind of pull your paper back so you can see. Now, this is how I do it. There's many ways to um, line up paper for these. This is just the easiest that I have found. So I just line that up like that, and then I know where to cut my paper. I'm just going to line that up. 
and because the top of this is flat I just want to make sure that this little tip here is also flat so I'm just going to snip a tiny bit off and then I am going to go ahead and glue this paper down And we're just going to leave some of that gray of that pocket showing as much as you choose. Myself, I have quite a bit of it showing. And as you can see, that lines up nicely and matches very well with our other. And you can slide your little fairy um, photo mat out to the side. Now, I want to add um, something to here. We're going to go with this one that says beautiful. This is another uh, piece from the Bits and Bobs. We're just going to cut this out along the black outer edge. And we're just going to add that, some glue to the back of that. And we are going to put that right on the edge here. And there we go. And we have an embellishment there. So that is where we're at with the construction. Um, I showed you at the beginning a walkthrough of my finished album. Um, this was just a, a way to show you how to do the actual construction of putting the pages in um, and some of the ways that you can decorate them as well as the flip outs and the back flip out in the waterfall. I will hopefully be back with you again soon with another tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this. And just remember um, the Blue Fern Studios paper uh, Fairy Whispers is available at Country Craft Creations, and you can um, embellish this, these pages in any way that you like. These were just some ideas for you. Um, okay, so now I'm going to show you um, my layout for my cover and how I'm going to do it. So I have taken some of the uh, pieces from the cut cardstock shapes ephemera packs. I have taken uh, this image of this fairy face here and I've also um, grabbed a butterfly from that as well. Actually the butterfly is from the other um, pack of ephemera. So we have two different packs and I don't have um, that back side because I used it here. One of the great things about these ephemera packs and uh, bits and bobs is the piece that comes that shows you all the pieces has an image on the other side. And I've actually, which I love this one and I will probably use it as well on the inside. But what I've done here is I have used what I like to call my wrapped chipboard method. Uh, I've taken a piece of chipboard, um, the regular heavyweight chipboard, and I have wrapped that um, as you would an album, but I wrapped the chipboard with uh, gray artisan cardstock, the same that the album is made out of. And then I have cut out that castle image. I put the castle image here and I have the background from it, but this is going to be my focal, which is a bit smaller. And I'm going to also put a mat of the um, glacier blue my colors so i'm going to go ahead and put this together really quick and i'm going to take that sticker off of the glacier blue my colors and this wrap chipboard method um i absolutely love doing this on my albums that way i have um, sometimes when you have larger elements that you want to uh, give that dimensional look to and you use like the foams, which work great too. Um, you either have to apply a whole lot of them or you have um, uneven areas. And I like everything to line up really nicely. So that is why I decided to start doing this um, wrap chipboard method. And it looks very clean and simple. You have one seamless flat surface to put um, it on and it all adheres to the to the covers of your albums the same and therefore you get it all nice and even and that's the reason that I like doing that and then I'm just going to go ahead and take my image that I cut down and I am going to stick that here with just a little bit of that glacier blue 
poking out kind of like it does um, on the album itself. We don't want too much showing, but we don't want not enough showing, if that makes sense. All right, we've got a nice smooth. Now you can see that we have this nice seamless image to put on the front of our album. Um, and this is going to go lay flat. It's going to adhere longer. And, and I'm just gonna arrange these however I think they look good and I will adhere them. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and show you some ways to make some clip embellishments to go on the inside. I will tell you the reason that I'm not going to adhere my front pieces yet is because I like to finish the entire um, inside of an album before doing that because I don't want to mess up my cover. So we have our album pretty much complete. Now I want to add some little um, clip embellishments. So we're going to take some regular paper clips and then the bits and bobs, the circles that come with them, the little flowers. Um, we have all these different ones that I have uh, cut out. These again, I said, like I said, come from the bits and bobs um, pack. They look like, that looks like this. And we're just going to take those and we have two of each on each of those sheets as well as this metal button uh, that comes in one of those packs as well. So we're going to make sure we have two of each flower here, which I do, and then I have two of that mop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push my book aside for a moment so you can see what I'm doing. I am going to take a paper clip. I'm going to lay this uh, embellishment, the, the round with the purple flower. I'm just going to lay it down. And I'm going to adhere a little bit of hot glue to the back side of that. Not a lot, just enough to hold a paper clip. To reload my gun here off to the side. Now I like to put my paper clips on so that the sharp edge is upward. Some people do it the other way. Um, you can do it any way you choose. So we're just going to lay that down. And we are going to get our other purple flower, which is the same one. This one, we're going to go ahead and we're going to adhere our regular adhesive around the outside of that circle. And then I'm going to just put a little bit more hot glue at the tip of my paper clip here to make sure it sticks. And then just make sure that this is facing the right direction. Set it on top of your paper clip and press. And now, as you can see, we have this fun new embellishment. And then you can just take these and clip them inside of your book, just like you would a paper clip. They also act really nicely for holding things like this journaling card down inside of a pocket um, so that when you open your book, it doesn't fly out. It keeps it kind of stiff there. And that works out really well. And I'm going to do the same thing with these and put them in. And I will show you the completed book when I'm done.